Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are taking a deep dive into a story that really highlights how global politics and economics are well intertwined and to see how one can really impact the other. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're going to be looking at a really specific chain of events and, you know, it might be something that kind of gets glossed over in the news cycle, but uh, yeah. it actually reveals a lot about how power dynamics play out on a global scale especially, uh, you know, in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. So the big picture here is that the Iranian reel has absolutely plummeted. Yeah. We're talking one reel for 640,000 U.S. dollars. Wow. That's 640,000 to one. Yeah. And it's not like a stock market fluctuation. Right. This is directly tied to Israel's recent and by all accounts, very successful operation against Hamas leader Sinwar. And I think this is where things get really interesting because... You know, when you just see the headline, you might think, what does an Israeli military action have to do with Iran's currency? But when you look deeper, it's all about these kind of like knock on effects. OK, so let's unpack that a little bit, because obviously we have this dramatic event and it's sending shockwaves through the Iranian economy. Mm -hmm. What's the connection there? Mm -hmm. And why should uh, frankly, why should anyone outside of the region care? Well, I think what's fascinating here is that this entire situation, it kind of transcends um, typical geopolitics, right? Because what it really shows is how deeply a nation's economic stability is tied to public confidence. So when you look at what's happening in Iran right now with the Rial's collapse, that's not just numbers on a screen. That represents people's life savings, their ability to buy food, like their faith in the entire system all like eroding um, incredibly rapidly. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, it's like that whole uh, emperor's new clothes thing, right? right? Where as long as everyone believes in the system, things can kind of keep going. Right. But the minute that that belief starts to crumble, exactly. things can unravel really quickly. Absolutely. And, and our sources point to some really interesting historical echoes here, like even looking at what happened with the Soviet Union, right? Like when a government's perceived strength is called into question, when people start to doubt their leadership, it can trigger this uh, this run on their currency. And we're seeing that play out in real time um, in Iran. And, and the thing is, this isn't just about Iran, right? Like our sources seem to be suggesting that this could be a sign of things to come, potentially impacting uh, you know, other nations with, shall we say, strained international relations. Right. And I think that's where this deep dive really kicks into gear, because what we're seeing play out in Iran right now with this economic turmoil that's directly following a very targeted military strike, it raises some pretty unsettling questions about the future of global power dynamics and the potential for similar events to unfold in other volatile regions. So are you saying that this one event this uh, assassination of a Hamas leader could be a harbinger of a new kind of conflict, one where economic warfare plays a much more central role. Precisely. And to understand how this new type of conflict might unfold, we need to really unpack exactly what happened in Iran and why it's causing such a dramatic reaction, not just within the country itself, but also internationally. So let's dig into the mechanics a little bit here. Mm -hmm. How does a targeted military strike translate into a currency collapse of this magnitude. Right. So it's not really the strike itself that's like directly causing the real to plummet. It's more about the chain reaction that it sets off. Right. Yeah. So we talked about public confidence being this really crucial factor. Right. This operation, it seems, has really shaken the Iranian people's faith in their government's ability to actually guarantee their security, both literally, you know, physically and financially. And that lack of confidence, that's that's kind of the real danger here, isn't it? Absolutely. Because, I mean, once that doubt creeps in, you start to see this phenomenon called capital flight, right? Mm. So people with money, they start pulling their savings out of Iranian banks, out of the real, and they convert it into more stable currencies, uh, things like the US dollar or the euro. And it's that mass exodus of capital that really fuels the currency's downward spiral. That's what makes it crash so fast. Like everyone's trying to get off a sinking ship. <laughs> Yeah. And it just makes it sink faster. Exactly. A very apt analogy. And this whole thing is compounded by another factor, and that is sanctions. So Iran has been grappling with international sanctions for years now. Right. And these have already put immense pressure on their economy even before this event. So this is almost like this latest event, it's almost like pouring gasoline on an already smoldering fire. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It exacerbates these existing vulnerabilities and kind of creates this perfect storm for economic instability. And here's where the long-term implications really come into play, because 
when a currency collapses this drastically, it's not just the wealthy who suffer. Yeah. It's the everyday people who are hit hardest, you know. Their savings are wiped out, the cost of like basic goods, just everyday things skyrockets. I mean, it's utterly devastating for a lot of people. And that instability, that desperation, that can lead to a lot of other problems too, right? Social unrest, even regime change in some cases. Absolutely, absolutely. And that brings us to another really fascinating aspect of this entire event, and that is the strategy behind it. Because Israel in this instance seems to be employing a very calculated approach, one that goes beyond traditional military doctrine, it seems. So you're saying there's more to this than just taking out a high value target. A lot more to it, yeah. <laughs> Our sources suggest that Israel is engaging in what's called a multifaceted strategy here. Yes, there's the targeted strike, which is designed to eliminate a key figure in Hamas, but it's also about the message that it sends. And that message isn't just to Iran's leaders, but to the population as well. So how does that play out practically? What kind of message are they trying to send? Well, on the one hand, it's a show of strength, right? It's a clear demonstration that Israel will not hesitate to act decisively against what it perceives to be threats. But on the other hand, and this is perhaps even more important, it's about highlighting the Iranian government's inability to protect its people, even within its own borders. It's almost like they're offering an alternative in a way. Right. A vision of stability and security that the current regime is unable to provide. Precisely. Precisely. And in a world that's, you know, absolutely saturated with information where news travels at lightning speed, that kind of messaging can be incredibly potent. It's like they're playing chess while the rest of the world is playing checkers. Right. This whole idea of undermining a regime, not through brute force, but by really eroding that public trust. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. And it's a strategy that could have really far reaching implications, especially uh, when you start to look at, you know, other nations that are grappling with these similar kinds of internal tensions and external pressures. And one example that our sources keep pointing to is China. OK, so let's talk about China for a second, because mm -hmm. they're obviously a major, major economic powerhouse. Right. But at the same time, you know, we've seen these reports of growing dissent, some economic uncertainty. How does this situation with Iran how does that connect to what's happening in China? Well, I think it goes back to that central theme we've been discussing this entire time, which is public confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So just like Iran, China's economic stability, it really hinges on this perception that their system is strong, that their leadership is fully in control. Right. But what happens if that perception starts to crack? So you're saying like if people in China start losing faith in the Communist Party's ability to actually deliver continued prosperity to guarantee you know their future that could that could trigger a similar kind of economic meltdown yeah and it's not about like you know having a crystal ball and predicting the future or anything it's more about understanding these underlying dynamics that are at play here so china they're facing their own set of very very real challenges you know a slowing economy these international trade disputes there's internal dissent and these factors, combined with a potential loss of public confidence, I mean, that could create a perfect storm for uh, for economic instability, even with the vast reserves of foreign currency that they have. Right, right. Yeah. And I think that's that's why this event in Iran is so significant, because yeah. it really is like a case study in how quickly a nation's economic fortunes, you know, how quickly they can turn once that trust is broken. Exactly, exactly. And it really highlights the potential for these kinds of scenarios to unfold in other parts of the world, especially in countries where you see that economic power is very closely uh, intertwined with political power. So. Where does this leave us then? It feels like we're we're kind of entering uncharted territory here hmm. with economic warfare potentially becoming the new battleground in international relations. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it. What we're seeing is a pretty dramatic shift in the global balance of power. You know, it's moving away from these ideas of traditional military might, and it's shifting more towards these um, more nuanced forms of conflict, information warfare, economic pressure, strategic messaging. And really understanding these new dynamics is absolutely crucial for, for anyone who wants to navigate the complexities of the 21st century, I think. Absolutely. Well, on that note, we're going to have to wrap up this deep dive for today but to our listeners out there just remember what seems like a distant conflict today you know it could have ripple effects that reach your doorstep tomorrow so stay informed stay curious and keep asking those tough questions because the world is changing right in front of our eyes and understanding those changes is more important now than ever